it's gonna strip the screw there. I can't put the cap on. No, it's a nut, man. You just screw it back on. Hey, what are you doing here, citizen? I said, what are you doing here, citizen? Nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. You're clearly a tourist. Our friends from up north, eh? A boot? Don't even say it like that. There's a moose loose, a boot to hoose. Fuck off, you hoosier, hey? Hey, what's that, boot? Fuck hey, sense! Oh, Jesus. It's a faint fucking accent! Get out of here. You can hardly come on, tell. Come on, insurgent, hey, insurgent, we have contact, we have contact!
on emigrate. What the fuck? Are There you are, Trevor. Ah, oh, if it ain't my favorite marksman, huh? How are you, Cletus? Fine and dandy, sir. You ready to hunt some elk? Ah, uh, beat satellite dishes. <laughs> Lead the way. Oh, here you go. Now, uh, put this in your mouth. A bad day hunting still beats a good day working, my pa always used to say. What is this thing in my mouth? And why do I have the feeling I'm not the first person to use it? I'll explain that in a while. Let's start with the basics for now. Elk senses are razor sharp. If they see you or hear you, you'll spook them. And they'll both. You gotta move slowly and quietly and keep that aside. But an elk's nose is as big as defense. When you're tracking elk, you always need to watch the wind direction. If you don't stay downwind of them, they'll pick up your scent and be gone before you can say boo. Especially with that distinctive, uh, musk of yours. I'm calling pot and kettle on that, my friend. All right, this is a prime area right here. You feeling ready, Trevor? Raring to go. Okay, let's see if we can bag ourselves some elk. I saw a young bull using a down tree to scratch his antlers on not ten minutes ago. Follow me. I'll keep us downwind so we don't spook him. Go on, put it in the head. Trevor, you're colder than a mother-in-law's kiss. All right, stick with me. I'll lead us further in. Keep quiet and stay close. I ain't seen much else or nothing else out here. But we're gonna have to see if we can coax one into the open. That's where that thing you've been chewing on comes in. Ah, yes. Please enlighten me. It tastes like old person. That's a diaphragm. Mm-hmm. An elk whistle, you and me. Give it a good blow. See if we can get any nearby elk to haul her back. Sounds like 
someone strangling a clarinet player, and I talk from experience. Shh, listen. Okay, you hear that? He's over there. You're downwind, so he's yours to lose, Trevor. Go get him. Not too bad at all. Okay, follow me. We'll move a little further in. Stay quiet. I think we might have a mating pair up ahead. Let's check it out. Now, remember, if it's a pair, we're only here for the male. No does. That's my rule. So if you see one with no antlers, leave it be. Blow your whistle again. See if you can get a beat on them. You got this now, Trevor. Uh, you're on your own for the next one. Tell you what, I got an idea how we can go in on this together. Text me a pic of your next kill, and we'll talk business. Ah, I gotta go. Uh, good luck. I'll holler at you in a while. Got the photo, another nice kill. So this is what I'm thinking. All this demand for wild raised meat with them city folks right now? If we divide and conquer, I reckon we could make ourselves a tidy little sideline. Text me a photo of your quarry. I'll let you know what it's worth and come by to pick it up as soon as I can. I like my meat with some age on it anyways. Uh, what do you say? Yeah, I say we'll see. I got a few other irons in the fire at the moment. All right, well, the offer's there, and you can keep that elk collar. Was my grandma's before she passed. Uh, be hearing from you.
Give me a break.
Lucky miss! You guys are gonna see this! You're always at that fucking golf course! You know I've got a competition coming up. Look, can we talk about this inside? Oh, really? You think I was born yesterday? Who plays golf at midnight? That's <laughs> it! Walk away like you always do! Hey, you! Listen, can you give me a ride? My wife's gone crazy. I'll throw some dollars your way. Sure, why not? The more dysfunction, the merrier. Thanks, man. Just let me grab my favorite iron. She's not getting that. What a mess. A really great wardrobe out for all to see. Whatever. I can't deal with it right now. Can you drop me off at the golf club in Richmond? At least I know I'll be welcome there. I take it you're leaving your underwear in the driveway, then? Yeah, I'm not giving her the satisfaction of cleaning that up. I'll go to the club, get a few drinks in me, and hope either her meds have kicked in or the gin is worn off by the time I get back. I appreciate you doing this, by the way. I, I know it's kind of a weird one. What's your name? T. Rever. Good to meet you. I'm Castro. What? What is that? Italian? Spanish? Pure wasp, I'm afraid. My sister's called Muffy, so I think I got off lightly. Ooh. So, what was that all about? Ah, just the usual psycho female stuff. She thinks I've got another woman on the side. And have you? That's not the point. She doesn't know that I have one. Okay, guy to guy now. I have a very strict code. Only on out-of-town trips, no real names, a dead trail. That's a gentleman's way, right? Ah, I'm not sure I'm your boy for moral compass questions. If you just drop me off at the entrance here, that'd be great. Thanks again. Hey, we should play golf sometime. Come by the club. I'm here most days. Miss me! Something that's very much post post irony. I told him I'd make a movie about his ass and call it Cunts in America. But that will be the post ironic use of the word cunt, both offensive and at the same time curiously anodyne. <clears throat> hey, what the fuck? I find your t shirt more than a little offensive. If there's one thing I cannot stand, it's post ironic hipsters. If you don't like it, you can go back to Canada, dude. Come on, you want a piece of me, huh? Oh, wait! Oh, fuck! Oh, Run, fuck. you little fuck!
still live with my mother! Posthumously ironic now! Uh, uh, I'm doing history a favor! God damn millennials! 